This video will provide an overview of the fuel delivery system used in the Porsche 944. While full system troubleshooting will be quite a bit more involved than the content covered here, this will provide a basic introduction to the main components of the system, along with common failure points and any expected costs involved in replacing a variety of parts on the system. For the fuel system overview, I figured I'd start here in the back where gas is added to the car. So on the passenger side, you have the fuel filler door and the gas cap and some friendly reminders from Porsche to check your oil. And when gas is added, it travels down the fuel filler neck, which sits behind this panel inside the cargo area. And there are also some ventilation lines and some valves in there to manage the fuel vapors in the system. And they connect down to the fuel tank, which sits under the back of the car. And if you pull back the rear cargo carpet and this pad, you'll find access to the top of the fuel tank. And right up here is the fuel tank sending unit or the fuel level sender, which basically provides the fuel level to the gauge in the dash. And when they start to fail, the gauge will stick at a certain level or show inaccurate readings despite fuel being added to the tank. And uh, OEM units, if you need to replace this, will run about $200. And aftermarket units can be found for around $100. And it's pretty easy to do. Uh, essentially just pop off the electrical connector and disconnect the two vapor lines at the top. And then this black cap will spin off to release the unit. And there's also a gasket under there that can be replaced, but pulls right out and you can swap the new one in. And once it's removed, you will be able to see down into the tank and inspect for any buildup of debris from old gas breaking down and collecting in the bottom of the tank and decide if you'd like to take some additional steps to clean out the system. So let's now take a look below the fuel tank. At the bottom of the fuel tank, there is a metal cover that protects the fuel pump and the outlet lines from the tank. And it's secured by this metal strap that runs diagonally across the tank. And it is held in by one 13 millimeter bolt tucked up by the wheel well over here on the passenger side. And if you pop that off, the strap drops down and you can lower this cover. And then you can begin working on the fuel pump if you need to. There's also a little inspection door here that you can just remove if you need to kind of check and see, are there any leaks that are taking place at the fuel pump? Do you need to dig in a little bit deeper? But to do any real work, uh, you'll need to remove the whole cover from the bottom here. With the cover removed, you can get a closer look at the fuel tank strainer and the fuel pump. The strainer basically has some plastic screens on it that prevents any debris in the tank from entering the fuel pump. If your car has been in storage or any unknown history, uh, probably a good idea to go ahead and replace the strainer right away. They only cost about $60. In general, ethanol gasoline blends have a shelf life of two to three months, whereas ethanol free gas will degrade after about three to six months. But with these cars and their age and how long they've been in storage, um, there's no telling what's in there until you take a look. So as gas ages, it will experience a phase separation and degrade to the point where sediment and gum and varnish deposits will build up inside the tank and with no strainer in place it basically just gets sucked right into the fuel pump and seizes the motor this fuel pump is essentially a motor that just sits in this housing and spins a metal carousel around it has some cylinders in it and that forces fluid through the pump and when the pump fails the car basically won't start and won't run uh, but they can be easily tested just by applying a jumper to the fuse panel where the DME relay sits. Um, so it's an easy easy item to test and easy to replace. Um, and we'll look at that a little bit further in a second. Here's another look at the fuel pump and it's connected on this end by the outlet line from the tank. And the other end has a check valve, a fuel line and a cap nut. And of course the two positive and negative power connectors for the unit. These run about $100 to $200 to replace and to do so just remove all the fittings and the connections and swap them out. Where an issue comes in is on this end, as you can see, there's some oxidation and whenever you're opening this up, we want to close it back down with some new crush washers all around. Uh, the check valve itself is around a $20 part and that's also known as a non-return valve and it allows fluid to travel in one direction but not the other and so that will maintain uh, back pressure in the system and allow it to start more easily. 
If the check valve fails, it'll result in a hard start condition where we're cranking it multiple times uh, before the engine will start because we're building up that pressure in the system. Next is the fuel line, and you can see there is some oxidation on these components. So if these are removed, there can be some irregularities in the metal um, as a result of that oxidation, and it may not seal correctly. So if that's the case, there's a couple things that can be done. Um, the best course of action would be to replace all of these parts that are affected. Um, the cap nuts are about $5. Unfortunately, the fuel line that goes up to the filter here is about a $100 line. Uh, and again, 20 bucks on the check valve. Another thing you can do is remove these components and place them on a very flat surface like a piece of glass and some high grit sandpaper and run those edges uh, as smooth as you can to eliminate any imperfections and see if it'll reseal that way. Um, otherwise, you're looking at probably replacing some of the parts back here. And from here, we can move up to the fuel filter. The line from the fuel pump leads up to the fuel filter in front of the fuel tank. And it's connected to inlet here and outlet on the other side. This is a line that I replaced. Uh, when I first replaced the fuel filter, I guess it freed up so much flow that it, it blew out the old line here and gas was leaking down. So good idea to inspect these lines. This is a return line from the front of the car. Uh, but again, anytime you get in here and you're replacing these lines, they're about $100 a piece. The fuel filters run about $25. Uh, the Porsche recommended replacement, I believe, was every 60,000 miles on those, but a lot of people do them more frequently, maybe every 30,000 or every couple years, just to make sure that the system is nice and clean. And from here, the soft lines turn into hard lines and they run up underneath the car. And those lines basically travel the full length of the car towards the front on the late cars. They come up through the passenger side wheel well towards the engine and on the earlier cars, they're over on the driver's side and come up on the other side of the engine. At the front of the car here is where things get fun and also expensive. So you can see where the fuel lines come out from the top of the passenger wheel well and come around to the fuel rail. We have a supply line and a return line. And supply line goes to the fuel pressure damper. And this unit functions to dampen the pulsations caused by the fuel injectors on the rail. And there's a high pressure line that comes out from below and around to the front of the rail and pushes gas to the back where we find the fuel pressure regulator. And the regulator will control pressure on the rail and exits back to the fuel tank. And underneath the rail sits the fuel injectors and their connectors. On the late cars, the setup is the damper in the front and the regulator in the back. And on the earlier cars, they're kind of side by side back here. So the damper on the driver's side and the regulator on the passenger side. And on those early cars, the fuel lines will go back this way behind the engine. And on the late cars, which is kind of a poor design is from the factory, they come right over the exhaust manifolds through here. And so if they crack or split, fuel is dumping on the hottest part of the engine and potentially causing fire, which some of you may have seen in the past. And so when I purchased this aftermarket kit from Renbay, I decided to request some extra length and route them back behind, one for a cleaner look and two uh, to prevent that fuel issue in the future. Um, not as much of a concern with the earlier cars because they go the other direction. Let's talk issues and costs for a minute. The fuel lines uh, that can crack should probably be replaced if they look aged and an aftermarket kit for those is about $125. When it comes to the damper and the regulator, the damper is now only available OEM from Porsche and is $450. Uh, the same goes with the regulator in terms of cost. It's $450 from Porsche, but there are a couple aftermarket alternatives uh, when it comes to this one. So Delphi makes a unit for about $150, and Beck Arnley has one for around $50. Um, so you can have a few different options with the regulator. And the reason is that these are replaced more often because of the wider range of symptoms that they can present. And sometimes they're replaced when they don't need to. It could actually point to another component. Um, but symptoms would be like rough idle, um, stumbling, sputtering, the engine's running rich, uh, no start conditions, or you know stalling shortly after starting. And really the best way to test if 
uh, that's failed is to test pressure at the rail and kind of eliminate that as a potential suspect. When it comes to the fuel rails, these can crack and develop leaks as they age. Uh, this part is no longer in production, so if you need to replace it, you're looking at a pre-owned one for about $200, um, or there are some aftermarket kits uh, for three to four hundred. Um, Lindsay Racing has a pretty nice setup if you need to replace that. The fuel injectors uh, will run about $120 a piece. Um, they can be cleaned and serviced for around $25 a piece, and a clogged or failing injector will usually result in things like a rough idle, misfires, poor fuel economy, um, hard start or no start conditions. And you can test them by cranking the engine while listening for clicking from the injectors. Um, they should fire twice for each revolution of the engine. I prefer to pull the connector off and actuate them with a battery. Um, it's a little easier to hear if they're moving uh, with that particular method. The final piece of the fuel system is the electronics related to the DME. Uh, the DME is Digital Motor Electronics, or simply Motronics, and that's Bosch's name for the Engine Management System, or ECU. And in here in the fuse panel, uh, under the windshield on the driver's side for the late cars and under the dash for the early cars is the DME relay. And the relay will provide power to the fuel pump, the computer, and the injectors. And signs of a failing relay here are that the car will have a hard start condition after it's warm, um, but will start fine when it's cold. Um, you could be driving and the car dies out and won't start, but after it cools down, uh, it will start up again. And because of that reason, sometimes people will carry like a spare one of these uh, in the car. This is a Euro unit, it's like 20 bucks. Um, the OEM units are about $80 for the mechanical ones. There are some interesting aftermarket options. Uh, Focus 9 technology has a uh, solid state DME, so it removes that mechanical component and some of the failure points, uh, but it also has like a three second uh, pump prime feature, so you can actually hear and know that the fuel pump is running before starting the car. It starts up a little bit easier. And these are easy to replace, just like a fuse uh, plug and play to get them swapped out. If you'd like to test operation of the fuel pump or pressurize the system and check for leaks, we can go ahead and do so by accessing the fuse panel. And we're gonna pull out the DME fuel pump relay, which is located at position G2 in the fuse box. And then we're gonna apply a jumper to connections 30 and 87B. 30 is 12 volt from the battery and 87B is the connection for the fuel pump. And we're gonna run the fuel pump for about 15 to 20 seconds, clear all the air out of the system and pressurize it with gas. And then we can see if there are any leaks at any of the connections. Well, that concludes the fuel system overview, and hopefully that gives you a good starting point to dig in and diagnose and replace any faulty components in the fuel system on your 944.